Hello everyone, today we are going to see how to do a scrape off of the Google Play Store. So what happened recently is that I had to do some research about existing apps on the Google Play Store and produce a document. However, this is a little bit boring, so I decided to make it a little bit more interesting by writing uh, my, uh, my own scraper. And I found this beautiful package called the Google Play Scraper from the PIP Package Manager and uh, I've used it. So let's have a look how you can do the same thing if you should have anything uh, similar to get done. So first of all we want to install this package and it works under Python 3 by the way. And you do pip install google play, uh, play scraper. I have Revit already installed since I already have it uh, installed. We are going to do from google play store import app and then what we're going to do is we're going to tell the Google Play Store what which application which application we want to to import into the Play Store so for example what we can do we can say result which is the result of this of the scraping is equal to app and then the full name of the app, for example, uh, we can we can take Firefox. So what we have in here, in the URL, is the ID of the application. In this case, org.mozilla.firefox. So we take this section, and we go back to our and we insert the name in here. And then we can specify a couple of details. For example, the language. In our case, English and country. In my case this would be Australia, so AU. Now what can we do? We can print the result to see what comes out. So let's open our terminal. Oh, oh sorry, this is Google Play Scraper. And in here we are going to get a certain number of items. For example, we have our title, we have a description. Scrolling down, we can see the details, for example, the icon, developer, developer address, website, developer ID, if it's free, what's the price, the reviews, uh, how many reviews for each star, which is like one, two, three four or five stars, what's the number of ratings, what's the average score, how many installs, um, and anything else you might need, Fi including the app ID, which is the one we already provided, and the URL. Now, to make things a little bit more interesting, let's say you want to import, uh, you need to produce a document for all of this. There is another package called docx and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take some parts of the result and write them into a docx image, into a docx document in Microsoft Word. So now we have our result and now we take a document which is a to document and then we can do document dot add heading and we will be result dot get title And then we can add the description, so it's document dot add paragraph result dot get description and then this is going to produce a nice looking document. So if we run it and we say open 
oh well no you need to save the document as well so document.save output.docx You can actually see how a nice document has, has been produced for us. Now, back to our editor. The next bit to do is to get the images. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to do it directly from Python. So I'm going to say path. Well, actually, I need to import path first. So from pathlib, import path. And now we're going to tell to path to create a folder called a screenshot. I do this just because I don't want to build it to my source directly. Dot make dir and parents equal to true exists. Okay, it's also true. This way, when we are going to create multiple, we're going to run the screen multiple times, actually, Path won't actually complain about the pre existence of this folder. So we need to save the images in order to set them inside the document. So, what we're going to do, we're going to get all the images in the document. So, for Im image URL, in result.get screenshots you can get an image data which is equal to request.get image URL actually we need to import of course the requests package So we get the image data, which is going to be downloaded for us. And then we're going to get the image file name. Which is going to be the screenshot. Plus. We can do a random string. or just image URL followed by JPEG and now we're going to save the image so we're going to say with open image file name write our file and now we can actually add this document to the this image to the document let's run the document again Let's see, I saw an error. Right, because it's the full path. So we cannot save an image that has this image URL. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to add a method that is going to create a random string.
we need a package string. These are all standard uh, library elements. Package random which I haven't imported. Let's say we want 10 letters. So in here I'm doing one of the best features of Python, which is the list comprehension. So we take a string, or one letter, and then we append to this string a random choice of letters, which is going to happen for each number e in the range of 10, which means it's like having 1 to 10. Everyone around the iteration, I'm going to append a new string to this result string. And then in the end, I'm simply going to return this result string. And now in here, instead of using my image URL, I'm going to say get random string. And now I should get the images saved. And I see another error, so let's see what have. Um, what's happening online? A bytes like object is required, not response, which means I'm actually not getting the data. So let's see image data. Request to get image URL. However, this is a response. We actually want to have the content. And uh, so let's see, image data is going to get my image, and then it's going to return my the content of the image. The image is going to be saved under the screenshots folder, which is created uh, here. with a random name followed by .jpg and then I'm going to open a, a new file and I'm going to write the image data and I'm going to add uh, the picture inside the document it looks everything okay, let's try once more is taking a little bit of time, so it's probably a sign that is actually working uh, by downloading the images that interest us. And now we open the file. I can see the length is much larger, and there you go. We have the content organized into our file really easy of course this block of code can be we can move it inside a method and then maybe run it for a number of uh, apps that are of our interest and that's all thank you for watching i hope you actually enjoyed this video if you did, uh, then uh, give me a thumb up. Thank you.